Thank you very much, Judith, for that lovely welcome. <coughs> Good evening, all. This is a Bowron, B O D H R A N. It is a goatskin or a sheepskin drum that goes back over four centuries in Irish history. It is played with a carved piece of wood, which they call a tipper, because one literally tips the skin of the drum in order to play it. Now, at one time in Ireland, there were no tippers. People played the baron with the tips of their fingers and their thumbs. But the tipper came into being, and that is a rather interesting story. Now, they say even today, if you go to Ireland and you're looking for great traditional music, you go to the County Clare. Not to say that you won't find traditional music in other counties, but Ireland has a great tradition in Clare of wonderful musicians, magic music, and wonderful Bowron playing families. And it is said of all of the Bowron playing families in the county Clare, the greatest were the McNamara. No matter where you went in Clare, if you found McNamara's, they all played the Bowron and played it very well. And it's also said that the greatest of the McNamara's was a man by the name of Stevie McNamara or Stevie Mac. Now Stevie Mac lived somewhere about the beginning of the 20th century, maybe a little earlier. We don't know for sure. But we do know when Stevie Mac sang his songs and played his tunes and played the rhythm of his drum, the music was magical. People couldn't help themselves. They just had to get up and dance. And even the elderly who may have had difficulty in walking. Now, Stevie Mac, when he was a young man, he lived in his cottage outside of his hometown of Inish Diamond. If you went past Stevie Mac's house, you would notice that the roof needed to be mended or the garden needed to be weeded. It wasn't because Stevie Mac was always off playing the music. Every day he would wait until he got word of where the next wedding was going to be, or a Cayley, a gathering in order to celebrate. As soon as he got the word, Stevie Mac put on his long brown coat. He always wore his long brown coat. Took his bow on, put it under his arm, whistled a tune, and was off to wherever the celebration was going to be. This one night, Stevie Mac was out very late playing at a Cayley with his father, with his friend, Charlie O'Donnell. When he came home, he fell into a deep sleep and didn't wake up until the sun was going down the following evening. Oh, Lord, said Stevie Mac. I'm supposed to be playing at the Shannon wedding tonight. He jumped out of the bed, dressed himself, put on the long brown coat, put the bowron under his arm, whistled a tune, and went out the window on the first floor of his house. You remember I told you Stevie Mac didn't have time to take care of the house? So much so that the branches of the trees came right up to the window. It was a typical Claire night, foggy misty, so much so you could barely see the hand in front of your face, and there was little moon to help you out. Well, Stevie Mac, 
He was in such a hurry to get to the Shannon Wedden. Didn't he make the wrong turn off the main road? And he found himself way up in a lonely road up in the mountains. I've been all over the county, Clare, and I don't remember a place like this. And the wind picked up, and the rain started to fall. I better find myself some shelter. In a little while, Stevie Mac came to a wooden bridge going across a narrow street. And when he got across that bridge, he found himself looking up at one of the largest houses he had ever seen in his life. It was pitch dark. There didn't seem to be a soul in this as Stevie Mac walked up the stone path in the direction of the gate. Screech! He was barely able to get the gate open because of the rust on the hinges, but open it did. And soon he found himself inside of the house. He reached into his pocket and put out his candle and matches. Now, Bowron players always carried candles and matches in case they needed the heat from the candle to heat up the thickness of the skin of the Bowron. C.B. Mack went down a long hallway until he came to a very large room. It seemed to be a banquet hall. And at the end of it was a large fireplace with one single chair. It's for sure I won't get to the Shannon wedding tonight. But I'm going to sit here, play a few tunes to keep myself company. He took off the long brown coat, took out the Bowron, and started on one of his favorite tunes, the jug of brown ale. The da da deedle dump the deedle dum da. The da da deedle dump the deedle dum da. The da da deedle dump the deedle dum da. The da da deedle dump the deedle dum da. Stevie Mac was just coming around to his favorite part of the tune when he heard an eerie voice. That's not my voice. Asher, it must be the wind coming down the chimney, and he played on. But in a few moments, that eerie voice came again. Stevie Mac, stop that infernal racket or I'll be coming down the chimney, and that surely will be the end of you. Ha, ah, said Stevie Mac. No one tells me when to finish the tune. The tune is over when it's over. And he continued to play, and suddenly down the chimney came a figure, the body of a man, dressed in a beautiful sheepskin coat and pants, beautiful leather boots. But it had nothing around its neck, for you see, it had no head. Well, as surprised as Stevie Mac was, he continued to play on. And then the figure, taken with the magic of Stevie Mac's rhythm and his drum, started to dance around the floor. A moment later, another voice. A caterwauling screech. Stevie Mac! Stop that infernal noise! Or I'll be coming down the chimney, and that surely will be the end of you! Down the chimney came another figure, the body of a woman and the head of a goat. And it too, it too, <laughs> taken with Stevie Mac's music, danced around the floor with the other figure. Now, by this time, Stevie Mac knew that there were two spirits in the house. But he didn't know how many more they might be, and he didn't know what they might do to him. And even though his hand was getting very tired, he switched over to one of his favorite reels. Farewell to Aaron. 
da da dee the deedle of the deedle um da da dee the deedle of the deedle um da da dee the deedle of the deedle um da da dee the deedle of the deedle um dum a third voice a howling well stevie mac stop that diddle dum infernal noise or I'll be coming down the chimney, and that surely will be the end of you. Down the chimney came the largest cat that Stevie Mac had ever seen, bearing his eyes down on him, dressed in a beautiful hat and a lovely suit, standing on its hind legs, supporting itself. And it too, taken with the same playing of Stevie Mac's music and his baron joined the other two as they danced around the floor. Well, Stevie Mac continued to play even though he was very tired. And down the chimney came more and more spirits and they joined the wild dance. They danced, Stevie Mac played, the winds picked up, the rains came, they danced, he played, winds, rains, dancing, playing, winds, rains, and... Stevie Mac was so tired, he could play no more. He put his head on his baron and fell into a steep sleep. When he awoke and he looked around and there on the floor all of the spirits fast asleep, knocked out from their wild night of dancing. And as the light of the new day came into the room, each one of them arose and disappeared into the morning air. I didn't get to the Shannon wedding, but what a night I've had. <laughs> he picked up his candle, put it out, put it into his pockets, put on his long brown coat, put his baron under his arm, and turned towards the door. And as he did, a chorus of voices greeted him. Thanks, Stevie Mac, for your wonderful music and the playing of your drum. We haven't had a night of music like that for such a long time. You see, we're the spirits that weren't good enough to go, but we weren't bad enough to go. <laughs> so we've been locked here all of this time in a kind of a purgatory. But now, thanks to you, Stevie Mac, we have danced all of our wrongs away, danced all of our sins away, and can make our way peacefully up to heaven. But Stevie Mac, we noticed while you were playing, your hand got very tired. So we have a present for you. And there in front of him appeared this very unusual piece of wood. And an unseen spirit came, put it into his hand, and showed him how to play it on his baron. Good luck to you, Stevie Mac and may the rhythms of the Bauron stay with you and your children and your children's children as long as there's music in Ireland. Well, when Stevie Mac got home, 
He showed everybody this unusual piece of wood, which they named a tipper, and how he had gotten it. And it wasn't long until almost every Baron player from County Clare to County Cork and back was playing the Baron with this stick. Now, there are still some people in the world today who still prefer to play this drum with the tips of their fingers and their thumbs. But the majority of us use this tipper. And it's all because of the night that Stevie McNamara got lost on his way to the wedding. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.